everyone welcome back to cyber secret tv uh, so last week we talked about how to use the bridges and, and configure with the tor and also i i gave you a couple of uh, ways on how you can get the bridge information if somehow the that's uh, it's censored or, or it's not uh, like you know directly downloadable by using your isp now today we are going to talk about the vpn uh, and for the same reason uh, we do want to increase our, our privacy and anonymity while accessing the dark web sites uh, uh, and like you know using the Tor network so we are going to see how we can connect to VPN uh, with the Tor and 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 keep or maybe increase our, our privacy and also have some more security controls because in in some countries uh, even access if you are trying to access the bridges or pluggable transport uh, you can be censored uh, because the ISP can obviously detect and decrypt the traffic that you're trying to connect to one of the bridge or, or, or pluggable transports and, and that's how uh, the VPN will come in very handy. Of course, VPN will provide some additional benefits which we will uh, discuss later on and then we will also discuss how do we use, uh, like, you know, how do you choose the VPN if you don't have one, like, how do you choose the VPN client. So uh, first off, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that last week when you completed the bridge configuration, you were able to connect to the Tor, and then here you would also able to see the Tor circuit that your browser has gone through or your traffic has gone through. So for myself, uh, I, I first connected with this browser, then it went to the Norway, then to Canada, then the U.S., and then finally to this this website. All right, so that's how uh, my traffic uh, was relayed using the Onion service. Now, why do we need VPN? So the VPN is needed because, let's say, assume you are the user and you are connecting to internet. Let's say this is a Google.com. Uh, then, then your connection is perhaps like you know maybe unencrypted. That's why I have it in the red arrow here. So perhaps unencrypted is the end end service or the website you are trying to connect is not providing the end to end encryption. Now, uh, this could be a problem, and how do we resolve the problem is using the VPN. And the VPN will allow us that the user can first connect to the VPN client. I'll show you the example in, in just a second. But yeah, you can connect to the VPN client, and, and what it will do is your connection, your all the traffic that you're trying to connect uh, to the VPN will always going to be uh, encrypted uh, because it's end-to-end -end encrypted. So that way, uh, the first traffic will go to the VPN, and then then the VPN will forward the traffic to the Google.com or or whichever website you are trying to connect, and and that again, like you know, uh, will be encrypted by the VPN. So it's it's end-to-end -end encrypted uh, using the VPN tunnel. Uh, it will it will solve a lot of issues. Now let's let's talk about how does how how is it going to be used with the Tor network. So user, and then you're connecting to VPN, and that's connected to the Tor network, which is eventually going to the internet. Now this will provide uh, three extra benefits. Uh, number one is, as I, we already talked about, it's providing the extra layer of encryption. So VPN does the extra layer of encryption here, uh, which usually if you're connecting directly to the Tor, it's not connecting because of course your your system admin or your your ISP or or whichever network you are working on, like uh, maybe you're sitting in the cafe, they can obviously intercept the traffic if it's not encrypted. So that's an extra layer of encryption. That's the first benefit we are getting. The second benefit is we are getting more privacy and anonymity. How? Because if the traffic is going from your system, from the VPN to the Tor, the, the ISP will not see the traffic is you're trying to connect with the Tor. It will only see, okay, you're trying to, and, and VPN is, is, you can imagine VPN is one of the, like, you know, one server hosted somewhere in the cloud. In, in different geographic locations. So maybe you have one in in Canada, you have one in Norway, you have one in Australia, one in Europe, et cetera, et cetera. So your ISP will see that you're trying to just connect to one of the remote server uh, somewhere on the internet. It will not see that you're trying to connect to the Tor. And and let's say if, if they are trying to uh, intercept the traffic uh, from the, v, uh, like outbound, from the VPN that they will not be able to see anything because it's encrypted and it can only be decrypted by the by 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 yourself like by your system uh, VPN client or the VPN server. Uh, the third and most critical benefit from our like for our purposes it it can help you bypass the censorship as I said like your ISP will not be able to detect if you are actually going to hit to the Tor network or you are trying to hit to one of the one of the VPN server. So that's way uh, it 
cannot censor your connection and, and that way you can easily bypass the Tor network. And, and I think this is the easiest way uh, you can also uh, browse the uh, dark web. Now, so now this is how your, your flow of traffic will look like once you have the VPN. So you have the user system, you're connected to VPN, then uh, sorry, your traffic will go through the ISP and then you will be connecting to the VPN. Of course, even connecting to the VPN will be, uh, there will be a request made to the VPN server by the VPN client, which will be intercepted or going through the ISP. But ISP will, will just see like, okay, you're trying to connect to one of the remote server and they cannot block you con from connecting that. Uh, there is hardly any, uh, unless like, you know, you have some policies uh, enforced by your system and on your system, uh, that it will, uh, you cannot connect to the VPN. I don't, I don't see any reason why would someone not let you connect to the VPN. And then, of course, you can then uh, connect uh, to the Tor network. So that's the easy way uh, you can bypass the censorship. Now, another benefit uh, that VPN does provide us uh, is, is protection from the hacker and, and especially from the MITM, man in the middle attack. We have we have talked about a lot on this channel about the man in the middle attack, so I'm not going to like uh, give you basic information. But essentially, let's say if you're sitting in the in the in the Starbucks or any cafe and 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 somebody uh, decides to uh, like you know when when they do MITM, they can do certain things. Uh, they can redirect you to some other website. They can decrypt your data and then see some sensitive information. Uh, they can do like you know inject some code and et cetera, et cetera. However, if you're using the VPN, the traffic can only be decrypted by your VPN client, or by your system, which is on your system, or the VPN server. So even if there is a hacker sitting and, and trying to do MITM, they cannot do any decryption or they cannot make sense of any data which is passing, going back and forth uh, from your system to the VPN server. The only thing they can still do is they can read it to somewhere else, but I think that's not a big of a threat. So that's the major, another major benefit I see uh, using the VPN with the Tor network uh, to even increase your uh, increase your privacy. Now uh, we talked about VPN a lot, but now the question is, how do you choose the VPN? Like, what's the good VPN? Uh, like, you know, why do you have to choose the VPN, and and what are the best practices you have to make sure when you are when you're shopping for the VPN? Uh, first and foremost thing is yeah, make sure you are using the good VPN, uh, the reliable one, uh, because you do not want to use some uh, like you know where you find some random one and free VPN and you don't even know how reliable that would be and and you don't even know like what what they are doing in the back end are they really encrypting your data or not? So uh, I, I would I would recommend not to use the free version of any VPNs because they are sometimes uh, sketchy and then like you know, it's not it's actually defeating the purpose that we are using the VPN for. So uh, free is not going to be always always good. Now third thing, uh, sometimes these VPN uh, providers uh, might also store the logs, which is again defeating to our purpose because. We are trying to be private. Uh, we are trying to be uh, private, and, and we are trying to be anonymous when we are uh, browsing the traffic or browsing the dark web. So if they are keeping the logs, that means they they have all the data on on what you are doing, where you are doing, when you are doing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So make sure your VPN does not store any logs, or you are uh, also on your system, or or maybe if you do, then maybe you have clear that up because before yeah, someone can access that. Uh, fourth option is uh, use the HTTPS everywhere. Uh, this will, I think, this is already implemented on on Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, I believe. So you can. Uh, this is sort of like you know another extra layer of encryption. So anywhere you connect, it's always going to be encrypted. Uh, not just by the service provider. So let's say uh, if you are connecting to Google.com and it doesn't offer the encryption or TLS in transit. Uh, but if you're using HTTP as anywhere, everywhere, uh, then your Chrome browser will make sure to always use the encrypted tunnel. So that's again, like you know, uh, making sure that yeah, uh, confidentiality of the data. Uh, last thing, I, I I wouldn't say it's mandatory, but I think I I would highly recommend if you can do so. Of course, like you know, uh, you can you can pay a VPN using the crypto. So again, no one can trace back. Uh, which VPN you're using and, and what did you purchase, who purchased this, etc, etc. So again, uh, but yeah, again, uh, that's completely optional up to you, but uh, that's one of the recommendations I have. 
So I think using uh, so one of the VPN that I have I have it on my system. You can you can look it up here. I have like you know various countries that my VPN servers are hosted, and I can select one of these, and and then once I connect to it, I can say like my traffic will then uh, route to uh, this location. Or like let's say suppose I'm connecting to Beijing, uh, China. Then once I connect to the Tor project, it will first go to China and then to Norway and Canada, US. Or this this will this will obviously change every time as we connect or make a new connection. But uh, as you can see now, it's Norway, France, and Netherlands, right? But the first connection, uh, if I'm using this VPN, it will go to the uh, let's say uh, Beijing, China, or Cape Town, uh, and then from there it will it will go to the Onion service uh, like what we saw earlier. In the Tor network uh, here, and then then finally go to the end site. So it will provide end-to-end -end encryption, uh, really good privacy and anonymity. So do try this out. Let me know in the comment section if you were able to access the Tor network successfully in your country, and if you did not, uh, please also share if you were able to use the bridges or pluggable transport as we discussed last time. If not, can you try with the VPN? If that works, I think if you share uh, in this video, I think it will be helpful for all, all the security professionals or, or all the people uh, because uh, privacy is being a major factor lately, uh, having like, you know, the social media sites tracking everyone everywhere. Uh, so we do want to teach everyone that, yeah, privacy is very essential and, and it's right for everyone. So do make sure you share your, your feedback, uh, what challenges you experience while connecting to the Tor or using one of the services and, and how did you overcome that. I think that will help Im immensely to all the people uh, watching this. I think that's all I want to share in this video. Uh, we'll connect again uh, next week with a new topic. Uh, till then, thank you so much and have a good day. Bye.